Hi guys, uh, welcome to the third episode of Simple Ken, which is very good news because most things end, and this hasn't ended. So yay! Uh, what are we going to discuss today? As uh, my content manager Rika said, something intense. This question is from Manasvi Hegde. I really liked how honest and practical this podcast was. It's not a podcast. I feel it would be very nice if you could share your views about how important it is for choosing the kind of friends we make. I don't know if anyone's paying attention, but I'm not giving advice on this long recording of me talking. But since you have asked me, this is a very cool topic because I have observed that. A lot of people have friends who just reaffirm their worldview, and that's a trap. I think you should have friends who call out your bullshit, and you have uncomfortable conversations with. Man, friends who are like, "However you are, you are best." Is I don't know why I turned into such an, but it's very bad for you. And um, I've noticed a pattern: people usually have two types of friends. they'll have friends who are worse than them so they are like the best person in that group so they feel great or they'll have friends who are com- like entirely better than them so they feel like the shittiest person in the group i think both are too extreme you should have in the middle you should have some friends who are like just like you in terms of maturity but also more mature and more experienced and older and also younger and stupider because if you're around people who are worse than you all your bad habits seem okay in front of them For example if if you work I don't know 5 hours a day while your friends don't work so you look like this amazing hard working person and then you're always going to be in that bubble and your friends are just like man I wish I could work 5 hours a day like you while they're doing zero and you never make friends with people who work 8 hours a day so you think you're this boss it's very very alarming and it's actually a, such a genuine trap like How would you know that you're in a trap right now? Right now obviously you think your friends are great and you have good decision. Everyone thinks everyone else is crazy. <laughs> Which is my favorite. It's I think some human bias. I don't know the name of it. It's this self bias which all everyone's trapped in which is you can critique someone else's work far more harshly than your own work. So they did this experiment where um they they did a test where they asked uh, people to come up with a word if they give you a topic and you have to come up with the word in like 10 seconds so they were like marriage and and you blurt out fighting for example and then they compile those words and they show it to um, subjects and they like can you tell us what kind of person this person is and they were like oh for marriage this person said fighting oh this person must be a difficult person to date but then they did the same test with them and if they did something negative like for marriage they said uh, anger they'll be like oh don't judge me by this anger word i was in a hurry it doesn't mean anything i'm a very nice person i never get angry then they did the test again with the showed the same results of other people and like oh wow this person seems uh, very weird cuz they said uh, unhappiness for marriage i'm like they completely forgot that 15 seconds ago they gave themselves the benefit of doubt that you know i was in a hurry i did not mean what i was saying but when it comes to others they're like no this is them being master poly so this is the scary when i read this i got very faked out so that means we are all in this bubble of <laughs> that i i think i'm fine and everyone else is messed up which is why you need good friends which also you could be bad at so you'll never know But if you have friends who call out your bullshit, man, that really helps you grow. But will you know that your friends are calling out your bullshit? Because you're biased. So life is a trap. So <laughs> I made you more confused. I think one question I'd got was, um, how do you deal with the toxic people in your life? 
and whenever someone asks me that question i'm like the first question you should ask is are you toxic and <laughs> because what if you're the toxic person again it's the same bias that you think everyone else is insane um you know when uh people say man our country is so dirty and everyone litters i'm like have you seriously not done that yourself um oh man you know uh, i hate it when people lie and they just not honest about what they want i'm like you do it all the time it is very scary internal bias okay so we have come to the controversial part of the recording already within man i'm so bad at uh, building suspense <laughs> within 4 minutes <laughs> so the question is from cute tampon which is a great name how was your whole stand up journey what is the dark moments sides what caught you unexpected whom do you want to give the most credit to who do you look up to this is not the question uh, i've answered this many times second question is how much how much do people recognize you when you're out how much has it affected you this is also not the question uh the bonus question is how uncomfortable annoyed were you in the episode of social media star with sonam kapoor stress intensifies a lot of people ask me this and i never answered it because i don't believe in talking ill about someone else but i have to very carefully answer this question because i think it's kind of unfair the amount of slack she got so this is the context i don't know sonam kapoor and i enter the room and janice is being very sweet so janice spoke to me uh and uh, she spoke to sonam also and then she made sure that we spoke to each other so we are comfortable before the interview a lot of people don't realize that i also get shy so i was very shy and intimidated by sonam kapoor cuz she is sonam kapoor and i am a guy from youtube so i was just like oh man be cool be cool and also you're a comedian so you have this pressure of oh i have to be not only really not shy i have to be funny and interesting to be fair sonam was very nice to me and she was very sweet and actually she was upset about something that day and every, every time we call cut and it it was a very heavy topic because Janice and Sonam are good friends so it seemed like super heavy so it seemed like i was intruding on their conversation but we unfortunately had to shoot this interview now for some reason when the camera started rolling she started taking my case which in bangalore terms is making fun of me now you don't realize the curse of being a comedian is if i want i could be very brutal and comedians can handle it because comedians know that we don't mean it the shit i say as jokes is so harsh that you would unscub i not unscub you would unsubscribe right now by how brutal it can get for a regular person comedians can do it the things kanan tells me would make anyone cry <laughs> but we know he's joking so it's like this um it's like hulk it it can't be like mid hulk it's either bruce banner or it's hulk so when she makes fun of me my only option is hulk and i'm like no 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 this she can't handle it and i'm not undermining her capability of taking a joke is that she's not a comedian she won't get it she'll be like this is too well thought of how can you not mean this <laughs> so i was like yo can he do not make fun of her back also like my career is built on jokes and in my capacity like i put out videos and you guys liked it so it is a very mutually i think the actors trajectory is very different um i think they also have major imposter syndrome because they must be thinking that oh i got here because of my connections my family well you don't feel that in that area as a comedian because you're like yo if you're not funny no one gives a shit yeah that's a positive way of looking at imposter syndrome i guess like as a comedian whenever you get worried about the success you have you're like wait they're laughing if they were not laughing then it's a problem so as an actor i feel she doesn't have that like if you she does a movie well they'll be like oh you're just doing it well cuz you're you know a famous person and if she does badly like see you're a bad actor they never get the recognition they deserve but as a comedian you're funny you're funny there's no discussion the room has decided so that's why in the video if you see i'm quiet and uncomfortable cuz in my head i'm like do not destroy her with your comebacks and second i am shy and third she's actually being nice to me when the camera is off i think 
Oh, I think that other thing is she must have met other comedians who do make fun of her. So she was ready with like armor, like, oh, you think you can make fun of me? I'll make fun of you before you make fun of me. And I was like, ma'am, I'm not like this. <laughs> I am one of the <laughs> quiet fellows. So I think she was also halfway through the recording, just gave up. She's like, oh, I guess Kenny's not uh, confrontational in terms of as a comedian. So she also was like, I think I also disappointed her because maybe she expected both of us to like do this, you know, um, parry. Is that the word? I don't know. What's the word? Uh, not tassel. Stand. Thank you, Asya. Like a stand. <laughs> like a standoff. And I ruined it. She must have been like, I'll make fun of him. Kenny will make fun of me. He'll be an editing episode. But she's like, I'm making fun of Kenny. This guy is just quiet. So I felt bad for her. Because uh, it's not like she doesn't get ruled enough. And what is interesting was two universes who never meet met. She was born like a superstar. So I think she's, I think, used to a certain kind of environment where, you know, she's directed and she's always surrounded by people. Well, I'm not from that environment. I, I was born in a hospital. <laughs> I think she was also born in a hospital. But I feel that the hospital would have been like fancy. Well, my hospital would have been uh, last minute booked. Uh, so uh, it was also very interesting how she doesn't have to be aware of the room. Well, I constantly have to be. Because when she enters the room, before she's entered the room, they've checked how the couch is. Is the water there? Is the shooting ready? So, and she's always told when to leave, which is also I found so scary that she's just sitting there and someone taps her shoulder. She's like, okay, we leave now. And she leaves now. So it is very interesting to see how I am very vigilant of the room because I'm a regular person. While... Also, she's instructed to talk to some people and not talk to some people because she'll go insane if she has to talk to everyone. Um, so yeah, that that was also quite interesting. All of this was freaking me out. And hence, the interview was very sadly bizarre. And you guys nicely uh, bullied her huh, on the comments. But you know, the irony is she's sitting in her mansion somewhere, <laughs> not reading comments. Uh, but she was very sweet to me. So I just want to say that. Sonam Kapoor is actually a nice person and she thought I would make fun of her back and I didn't. But to be fair, I'm very happy I did that because I would have said some shit I regret. Um, I think once it slipped out also, I was being sarcastic and she didn't get it. So I was just like, this is not fun. I don't want to make fun of someone and they're not being aware of it. So thanks uh, for that question, for that controversial question, cute tampon. This is also like, why would you name yourself cute tampon? Like you want to be anonymous all your life or what? What if you, see now I featured you in this uh, long recording of me talking and you can't even tell your friends because your friends are like, wait, wait, your name is cute tampon. Why, why would you do this to yourself? Okay, now this is a relationship question. Again, I can't give you advice, but Vidya Ratan, this is one pigeon outside the window and it's nicely distracting me. These pigeons are so jobless, dude. <laughs> it just boggles my mind. There's one sense of complacency that pigeons have. Crows always feel like they're trying to get their rosy roti. Pigeons have one, hey, I cancelled uh, <laughs> today, dude. I'm just going to chill. There's one, one shitholeness these pigeons have. I, I like animals a lot, but this pigeon especially is one. I feel like it's like a freelancer who doesn't meet his deadlines. You know, I feel like crow is like a much dude. <laughs> a dove is like this ambassador delegate of France. And this pigeon is like this guy who doesn't meet his kids. And gets drunk, well, beats his wife, waste fellow. What are you trying to clean yourself? This pigeon is trying to clean his wing. It looks dirty only. Some great cleaning you're doing. Uh, anyway, so Vidya Ratan asks, I've been in a long distance relationship for over a year now. He lives in the US and I live in Bangalore. Whoa! That's some shithole time difference. The distance and time zone difference really takes a toll on us sometimes. Sometimes? Wow. Uh, what are your thoughts on long distance relationships? Not asking for advice since you mentioned you're not doing. Okay, so I'll just tell you my thoughts. I won't tell you what to do. Now, I, when I was young, 21, 22, I like a dumbass used to keep saying, 
hey i can do long distance relationship why do people do long distance relationship and i was so like proud of my inside like yo just don't do long distance relationship just date someone in your city and then i think recently like 2 years ago i was doing my spiel of giving gyan like why do people do long distance relationship and then complain about it and this is guy held my shoulders like any no one wants to do it they have to and i was like oh you're right nobody's happy <laughs> going into a long distance relationship what usually happens is that you date someone and you fall in love with them and you have this amazing connection and they have to move so you're like why is life not convenient for me and you have to deal with it um just if you give me 10% naivety allowance don't start a long distance relationship that's that i feel is little stupid like don't start it off with like if <laughs> i know that's mean but if you texting someone and they're in the us and you're in bangalore and they're very interesting you no know, just shut the phone <laughs> just do that for yourself but if you met them in person and you started dating and then they have to move good luck to you i think it's the hardest thing in the whole planet and i have utmost respect for people who do it and it breaks my heart when people do it for years and then they get together and then they don't like each other and i'm like oh my god how oh, like shit hole is life i feel such situations you know like my other favorite shit hole situation is people who date each other for 8 years absolutely fine and then they tell their parents as getting married and telling the parents almost like you know side me will tell them and then it becomes a big issue and they don't get married and i'm like wow eight years oh my third shit all favorite moment is when people live with each other for five years and then they have to get married and then they don't <laughs> just like what's going on oh how shit hole can these situations be i don't know how you recover from that uh so with that i think all i'm saying is i don't know how we're gonna do it but um also this time difference is like number one sweet recipe for fights okay So I think fights in relationship is like the relationship between fire and fire hydrant like a fire truck. So when you're in the same city the fire is happening and you can call the fire truck and he'll come in like 5 minutes. He'll break all the traffic laws and come. Now if you're in America and you're in Bangalore the fire is in happening in Bangalore and the fire truck is in America. So by the time you call the house is burned down completely. So all these misunderstandings that happen in relationships the best way to fix it is like you will be like yo yo what's up what's happening no 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 that's not true that's just in your head just tell me what you're feeling i'll tell you what i'm feeling solved but if you're like yo hello oh he's asleep screw this guy <laughs> and then that's when havoc happens and that's why asha doesn't date that's why he's smiling right now he's like i don't have to deal with this shit asha would you do a long distance relationship no have you done a long distance relationship <laughs> He's such a mystery dude. <laughs> He's such a mystery. Oh, by the way my favorite comment of this week is one guy on YouTube uh I'll show it up here who said hate slam poetry but loves TikTok. <laughs> That was great. That's true. You know why I still will justify slam poetry takes far less effort than TikTok does. Okay, TikTok there's a lot of effort. I'm not talking about the bad TikToks. There's some amazing there's one very funny track on tiktok called up some sony mote mote ho which is i don't know what this song is but it's so funny they basically just take fat people and they record and most of the best ones are fat dogs and so they wake up the fat dog and the dog the track is playing in the background where do you see that in slam poetry <laughs> slam poetry is like i'm sad i'm sad <laughs> what to do <laughs> i don't know Oh man. Oh. I think I've made more people aware of slam poetry than dissuade people from it. Um so Vandana Sukumar and lot of dating questions this time. What do you think of dating apps? Have you tried dating through it? And what qualifies what qualities are you looking for that in a person? Okay, controversial topic. I feel for me that dating apps don't work. Uh I think it's great for like meeting people and like getting a feel of what's out there but for me it's not it's not been I think I'll tell you why I have this concept 
um i think dating apps are great to meet people out of your circle and if you find someone good for you but you know when you're choosing a partner in your life okay maybe you're not that intense but if you, if i'm choosing a partner and if i am not willing to put the effort of going out there and getting over my um my shyness or getting out there to work on myself to meet people and to find the person that i'm going to end up with i think i personally have always gone to dating apps when i'm in crisis when i don't want to do the effort when i just want to get happy fast and i want to meet someone feel better about myself and i i personally feel that's not a, that's not the right way for me to approach someone i could potentially end up for the rest of my life so um yeah so i feel i have compartmentalized dating apps as someone you just meet because you want to go for a date for fun and also the problem of the the context if you know that you're meeting each other for a date you're going to be that best version of you you're going to be the what do you say brand ambassador of you and that's not genuine anyone can be interesting for like a a day and it and i'm not saying it's your fault or my fault anyone's fault that's how we function if you meet someone on a date you're going to like look chaka chaka and be interesting and listen uh but i feel what's happened when i don't meet people over dates is that i've met them in a normal setting and i'm not trying to impress anyone and they are not trying to impress anyone we show ugly sides of each other because we're not trying to like date and you find out about how this this person is social especially for girls i think that's important cuz what is this guys violent but if you see how they interact with their friends and how they interact with you and your friends and then you date them then i feel like there's no like i thought you were like this but you're not like this problems also man if you date someone through an app please go meet their friends huh? friends are one big <laughs> friends are one big uh, you know how in for in dogs no if the nose is dry it means the dog is not well i don't know what the analogy is but <laughs> but if you go see someone's friends and the friends are worrying you it's a good sign because you choose your friends parents you should never judge because man parents it was not your fault but friends nicely judge away uh this question was on the top of all the comments and a lot of people responded to this person um so which is very cool by the way the this series has been very enlightening for me this is the first youtube video i've had where 70% of the subscribers saw it and 30% of non subscribers saw it now this number might seem normal to you but usually it's the complete opposite whenever you put up a stand up clip um 70% of the views come from new people and 30% come from the subscribers that's why if you notice if someone has 1 million subscribers usually the views are 300k which makes no sense is because 30% only see it i think that's how also the algorithm works but for simple can 70% of the subscribers saw it which is beautiful cuz that's exactly why i made this show this was purely for the people who follow my work and i don't know i want to get to know you guys better and it's i get to like answer your questions and make fun of you <laughs> uh which i can't do when i'm making content for everybody um so what's happened is i've had such amazingly positive and fun and in depth comments from people i know who don't comment usually i know that you don't comment usually cause your grammar is perfect and you're articulating things and there's an introduction there's a middle part and there's a ending part so i'm just like wow why do you guys not comment on the other videos and as i said i read every comment so what this beautiful thing happened was this person asked this question and everyone answered it for them i'm like wow so like a community of people helping each other out don't do too much helping also okay you'll get drained then you'll be like hey yeah, i'm trying to be nice yeah, i'm getting drained <sighs> it's a cycle anyway so pav mittal ask uh should i accept that i have depression or should i ignore it by feeling that it's privileged thing to have because some people have nothing to eat and on the other hand there's me who's feeling depressed how should i look at these different perspectives this is one heavy ass question i need to have a jingle for that uh heavy ass question mm -mm. what do you think should i accept that i have depression or should i ignore it <laughs> i feel you shouldn't ignore it i actually asked this in my therapy 
because it's very weird to live in india because the poverty extreme is so weird any other part of the world if you live in a good neighborhood it's a good neighborhood and then there are bad neighborhoods india mein you can have a amazing five star hotel next to it there's like a jhopad party and it's so messed up but it's normal now so you're also so confused that do your problems matter and this is what i spoke in my therapy i was like i feel so stupid complaining that my job where i get to do jokes as a living uh this is not going well <laughs> while 10 years ago i didn't have a job so my therapist said that yo the world is messed up and this is the cards you have been dealt with which are amazing no doubt compared to someone else but that doesn't mean it's not a problem for you which kind of comes back to me empathizing with sonam kapoor that obviously you guys are like yo she has everything but to she also in her perspective she has her own problems which are problems cuz that's her life so this is a very valid question like yo i'm sad but then i go out and i see a kid begging so then should i just shut the fuck up and ignore my problems cuz there's a kid begging and the honest answer is i have no idea how to deal with this how do you deal with it that's why we're all messed up in the head you're constantly conflicted between do i think about myself or help everyone around me if you helped everyone around you you would never be able to do anything in your life and then the conundrum is but what if everyone helped everyone <laughs> yeah i know and this is why i don't sleep at night sometimes so this is a great question and parv i'm going to join you in this conflict but just just no part that your problems exist <laughs> don't ignore it this first line is so i i think some your dad or mom must have told you this shit that ignore your depression uh parv i don't know how old you are and your profile picture is a dog it's a meme dog so you to have full blown depression i don't know if you can afford a therapist but if you can great if you can just read up all you can about depression and um, i am not going to spoil you guys by telling you what to do because you know you guys nicely feel the symptoms but don't want to do the work of finding it out because i am not a qualified therapist so go and do the work google what depression is what the symptoms are what you can do and the solution is not just meds there's a lot of solutions but find that out by yourself cuz you'll be like can you ne bola ki exercise karo main exercise kiya fir i'm still sad because i'm you don't listen to me go do some work okay and take care parv and enjoy the poverty and feel guilty of everything you have and it's not your fault you just happen to be born in a family that has uh, a house and you have both your limbs and your hands and and while someone else doesn't and you're just like what why do i deserve this and why does someone else in another country get bombed yeah all these wonderful shit no Ugh, that's a problem with the internet we know everything this next question is a little diss at me soumya sahu says this is yash sahu kenny this is my sister's account <laughs> let's sister know you're doing this soumya do you know that yash is using your laptop yash how how old are you and how how do you know her password anyway love seeing your videos just want to ask you why and how did you think of choosing art as your stream i hope you were good in studies so why not science or commerce is this my dad ha huh? yash why not it seems buddy i'm 29 now still you're making me feel guilty fyi i did computer science 11th and 12th and i got distinction in cbse board 10th and 12th how much percentage i won't tell you but i got distinction i did science i was going to join an engineering college but i chose to do art because a i hated school and none of it made sense from a very young age 6th standard i knew that this school is a sham i had a breakdown moment in school in 6th standard i got up in class and i looked around and i said we're all idiots this is not what life is i i i swear to god i had this moment I'm like what are we doing i can read this textbook at home why do we need to have a teacher reading out the chapter 
when i know how to read and everything is clearly explained in the textbook and the teacher is not making it more fun what are we doing here why are we forced to sit and specifically study for one hour this and then one hour that what if i like maths and i want to study maths first all of this happened i gave up on school and then my dad who's so smart made a deal with me which he doesn't remember by the way my dad said if you get good marks in 12th you can do whatever you want any degree you want i was like you swear he's like i swear such a smart guy he gave me a goal and there was an incentive and people work with incentives so i got good marks in 12th and he said what do you want to do i said i want to do arts because i'll be happy there and i can do other stuff um so yeah that's why i didn't do science or commerce okay yash was no sense of private space person space not private space <laughs> another free balling i guess uh Vraika who's sitting behind the camera who's another character I've added now you'll never <laughs> there's Asha there's Raika so many people so she uh, suggested why don't i round up cuz i think the episode had mostly questions about relationships so why don't we <laughs> go through the whole process of grief how you get over a breakup now i think people take breakups too lightly uh breakups can ruin people's lives um a lot of people go through depression kill themselves uh get obsessed and i think especially parents and friends are like it's just a breakup man drink it off forget it no like it's literally damaging parts of your brain so please don't take a breakup lightly um don't don't t- take don't take relationships lightly but breakup especially people have if you look at people who come in suicide like heartbreak is a big thing so please don't take it lightly now i don't know if you know the five stages of grief is by elizabeth kubler ross and david kessler these people sound smart if your name is david kessler and elizabeth kubler ross you better come up with something cool now obviously the five stages is denial anger bargaining depression and acceptance my order is depression anger denial anger depression anger there's no bargaining and then acceptance the best way <laughs> can't give advice for me is knowing that time heals everything and if you're like yeah i know that let me give you an example the reason factually time heals everything is because humans have to cope with death So when a family member dies your brain can't be like okay i'm sad i'm done your brain wants you to keep going so your brain is designed to get over death okay remember and death is not a bad thing it's a part of life so if your brain can get over death you can around to get over breakup again not trivializing breakup but i'm just saying it helps you now second is all this time you were fine without them and then you met them and then you became happy and now they're not there so you're like how can i continue same way how you continued when they were not there simple so <laughs> i have this analogy of how to be happy is you only value something when it's gone right so what's happening in life is you keep getting stuff so then you're level of happiness keeps like requirement increases like oh uh, i have a house and i have a couch and i have a tv and this is minimum now i need a playstation now this is minimum now i need um, a cook who comes home and makes me breakfast so this is minimum but what if every month someone comes and takes it all away and then you have to sit in an empty house for a month then they bring it back and you're like wow this is awesome So you're constantly stuck at this level. I think one thing I do is whenever I date or I'm in a relationship, I constantly remind myself, "Yo, remember how it was when they were not there, and you were fine, right?" So them them being there is just a bonus, because the human brain is a piece of shit, okay? And it loves to get used to things. It loves to get used to things, and then you get bored. You can get bored. Classic example: Jay Z cheated on Beyonce, guys. Jay Z. who looks like a seal who looks like a if they made a live action remake of a snail 
Jay Z would play this nail. Cheated on Beyonce. You, you get bored of G- Beyonce. That's how stupid the brain is. Now the third thing is I treat breakup like an addiction. If you had to stop smoking, or if you have you drink a lot, or you like have a you know let's do sweets because that's less depressing. So you have a sweet problem. Okay. Now you want to cut sweets. What do you do? You're like no sweets. You know what you don't do? You don't buy a cake and you leave it in your kitchen table and you're like, you know, I'll show self control and I'll skip the cake in the house and not eat it, which is impossible. Same way, block out your ex and do not be tempted. Now a lot of you like any, I think that's very extreme. It is extreme if you can't, if you don't have self control. If you don't have self control, no, accept your fragile ego and block them because you are a stupid. idiot who can't do what's right for you so admit your weak and block them don't bring the cake home and stare at it and be like i won't eat the cake and suddenly you're surprised at twilight night you're eating the cake and sharing your feelings and telling them how much you miss cake when you break up no i think one key thing is you find out who, who are good friends if you break up with some and your friends say hey go <laughs> date everyone get drunk sleep around These friends are pieces of shit. Okay, notice what they do after breakup. They don't do any of that. <laughs> They're nicely enjoying, and you're like, no, Kenny, it's coming from a good place. No, I think one recent thing I realized was go through a breakup alone by yourself. I le, I'm the, again. Don't take my advice if you have, if you're depressed or something. It could get worse. But if you don't have depressive tendencies, you don't have anxiety. Go through it alone. Go through that pain. Just sit. Think about the person, and then you'll stop thinking about them, and go through it. Don't go on dates. Don't numb yourself out. It never works, yeah. The rebound—it's like a giant rebound. It doesn't work. It's not fair to other people, also, no. I remember after I broke up once, I went on a date, and she was so interesting and fun. But she could see that I was still recovering from the last one, and then I realized what a asshole I am. You know that she got ready and got. Dressed up and made time for me for dinner, and I am not giving her the mental space. So it's not cool. Those things have really helped me, which is going through it alone, not listening to friends' advice. Also, have you noticed when you want to do bad shit? No, you go to the friend who gives you bad shit advice. You're like, you know, I want to get um, drunk and go out on dates, but my sensible friend won't tell me. So let me call my. We all have that one friend who's just his life is just shit hole. <laughs> so you call him, and you're like, "Yo, I was thinking of getting drunk and going on like multiple days here." Yo, bro, let's do it. And you don't tell your sensible friend, and then you go through the shit, and then your sensible friend finds you crying, and your sensible friend, "Yo, what did you do?" It's like, "No, man, I did this thing." Like, you've been talking to Shashank, man. It's like, "Yeah, man, Shashank told me." Shashank understands me. Where's Shashank now, bro? I don't have a friend called Shashank, but you know who you are, Shashank. Your life is a mess. Nicely, you're making other people also. that made me go through a lot of <laughs> emotions i think the best decisions i've made is when my best friends and my relatives and my audience has told me not to do something or do something and i am like no wait if i was in by myself what what is the ideal thing to do and that's always brought me joy cuz i don't feel trapped um and once you've decided that then you can go out and then take feedback so like when i was doing going to do this long recording of me talking lot of people said don't do it and there was this voice inside me that wanted to so finally when i sat by myself i'm like okay if you were not in bombay if you do not speak to these people if you are not at this point of your career would you want to do this i said yeah i actually want to do this long format thing where you get to know how messed up i am and it's not edited and uh you get to know my quirks and we get to discuss things that don't necessarily have to be funny it'll be quite cool and i'll get closer to my audience and i want that audience which is connected to me and then i went out and then i asked for feedback i was like hey do you think this is a good idea what should i do cuz i've made the decision huh? but you tell me how to make this the best version so it's a mix of both It's a mix of both, guys. So that brings us to the end of this episode. You guys have been uh, amazing as always, listening. 
Uh, this is the third episode, so please check out the older ones. The second one has Kan and Gil and me talking. The first one is just me trying to figure out what this long recording of me talking is. The legend of this podcast is Ashyar, who is this uh, mysterious person who is forced to listen to this. Now it's been I had with Raika. Sorry, I'm burping. <laughs> Raika would not might not be there for the next one. You know, and I remind myself, you were fine when Raika was not there. So you'll be fine the next time she isn't. So just be glad she's here today, but the next time she won't be. So thank you guys. Thank you for listening. I hope you've reached work. And um, if you have any friends asking you to get drunk, if they ask you to do stupid shit, ask them to watch uh, Skulls and Roses. Best. Best it is. Skulls and Roses Amazon Prime video is going to go down as Picasso. Um, sorry, not Picasso. Um, who's that painter dude who bit off his ear? Van Gogh, Van Gogh, when he was a painter and everyone said his paintings were shit and it didn't make sense, Skulls and Roses, 20 years, 30 years from now, we will look at it and be like, man, it was the ultimate human experiment of how people under stressful situations will let go of their own sense of right and wrong. It's amazing. That's my recommendation of the week. Thank you for listening. This podcast is, oh, uh, this long recording of me talking is on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. By the way, Spotify is doing really well. So thank you for the people who are listening. Shout out to you guys. Uh, Stitcher. Uh, it's on iHeartRadio, by the way, because <laughs> I was like, why not? Um, it's also on my website. So you can listen in all of these places. It's free everywhere. Please send me your questions. Um, it doesn't have to be about relationships. It can also be about something you just want to discuss together. It can be about pop culture also. This is going to happen every week. So it'll be, you know, relevant uh, for at least five days. So you don't have to ask me questions which are like super deep and intense. You can also ask me questions like, hey, what do you thought of that movie? Or what do you thought of that thing that happened? Thank you so much, guys. Oh man, I don't want to say bye. <laughs> I'm having so much fun. Anyway, guys. <laughs> bye bye, Tata. It's time for simple. It's time.